Today on CPTV, the woman found guilty of killing a CHP officer tearfully faces her sentencing. A popular Cal Poly store is getting a new name. And students will have to wait longer than expected for Subway sandwiches. Live from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus, I'm Lindsay McLeod. And I'm Sean Partee. You're watching CPTV. Local police are warning you not to walk alone at night. Officers are looking for the man who sexually assaulted a woman last night. She was walking alone near Hathaway and Longview, and she says the man knocked her down from behind and grabbed at her underwear. She was able to kick him and run away. The man is reportedly in his 20s, 5'6 to 5'8, wearing a dark colored long sleeve shirt and blue jeans with a beanie. Police are asking for the public's help in finding the attacker. The woman found guilty of hitting and killing a CHP officer in 2010 has been sentenced 15 years to life in prison. In August 2011, Kaylee Weisenberg was found guilty for the murder of Brett Oswald. Prosecutors say she was high on methamphetamine and speeding when the accident occurred. On Thursday, San Luis Obispo County Judge John Trice sentenced her to 15 years in prison. Weisenberg's new defense attorney originally made a motion for a retrial, saying that the previous defense attorney had given bad counsel. The defense claimed that the previous DA had taken money from the Weisenbergs, lied, and even arrived in court smelling of alcohol. Still, Trice denied the motion. I hope and pray that my apologies to you for the loss of Uncle Fred Oswald. Weisenberg has 30 days to appeal the sentencing. For CPTV, Lindsay McLeod. In addition to her 15-year prison sentence, Weisenberg was also fined $10,000. A team of educators from other universities are heading home after a three-day visit at Cal Poly to check in on how the university is doing. The visit was part of the regular accreditation process put forth by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges. The WASC team had meetings with students, faculty, staff to evaluate how Cal Poly has met the goals set by WASC. At the preliminary report presentation on Thursday, the team spent most of the 30-minute meeting praising Cal Poly, but four areas still needed improvement. Three were about increasing diversity on campus and helping minorities. A familiar place on campus will be making some changes. CPTV's Olivia Bickle tells us more. El Corral is getting a new name. The Cal Poly Corporation launched a contest to rename Cal Poly's bookstore on the first day of spring quarter. Students, faculty, and staff are invited to submit new names for Cal Poly's bookstore. The winner of the contest will receive a new Piaggio Typhoon scooter, which was donated by Slow Vespa. While the bookstore used to only sell textbooks and school supplies, it now offers technology products and Cal Poly apparel. El Corral hopes that the new name will embody these updates and reflect the polytechnic aspect of the university as a whole. We're really looking to hopefully find a name that really lines up more with the university, you know, and something that really invokes a lot of spirit and pride and excitement. While people are excited about the bookstore's renovation, El Corral has had its name since 1933, and some students and alumni think it would be best to stick to tradition. When the bookstore first opened almost 80 years ago, Cal Poly was known for its hands-on agriculture programs. El Corral was thus named after the horse corrals on campus. It's this historical context that has some students upset about the name change. I don't see the point of renaming it. I mean, I don't, I don't see where it's coming from. What's wrong? Is there anything wrong with the name? I think we should stick with tradition and keep it, keep it as El Corral. The bookstore also plans on making some changes this summer to freshen their look and go along with their new name. The contest ends April 15th and the bookstore will be announcing its new name online by May 15th. CPTV, Olivia Bickle. The contest, visit the El Corral website at elcorralbookstore.com. Students. Students will have to wait a little bit longer than anticipated for a new dining spot on campus. Subway Sandwiches is, is, is expected to open the first week of summer. The new dining option will be located in the area that was previously Dexter Subs. Originally, Cal Poly planned to open the restaurant last week, but they're still waiting on building approval from the state. The Cal Poly dining director says that Subway will open as soon as the building is finished. 
The new dining is built to service large numbers. They plan on having two different sandwich lines, an option to text sandwich orders, and express window pickups. It'll be really convenient because like, I only have short breaks between like a couple of my classes sometimes, so it'll be really convenient to be able to just text my order and pick up my sandwich and go to class. Campus dining facility will be open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and with late hours and a location near the library, Subway is expected to be a popular choice on campus. Cesar Chavez Day was quite the party, but it looks like students left something behind. CPTV reporter Ali Wente has more on the story. Students gathered at Shell Beach for Cesar Chavez Day. What many students probably didn't consider was the effect it had on the Pismo Beach community. After thousands of partiers left Shell Beach on Cesar Chavez Day, the Pismo Public Works Council was left with quite a bit on their hands. The department, along with a student volunteer group, collected about 18 cubic yards of garbage off of the beach. There was a lot of trash, but I think at least four times students, or I'm assuming they're students, came up and asked if they could take our trash. And then they took all the beer cans, soda cans, water bottles, and they took it away from us. All the work put into the beach cleanup totaled to be about $8,000, and this is just the beginning of many beach celebrations to come. The next two weeks are known to be the busiest weeks for the Pismo Beach Public Works Council because of local spring breaks. Beach events typically start with spring break and continue until Labor Day weekend, with 4th of July normally being the biggest beach party. Cesar Chavez Day is a somewhat new annual holiday, but turning out to be a bigger event closer in comparison to the 4th of July. This is going to be an annual thing. We just want to make sure that we're, you know, the students are safe. We've got some kind of uh, a plan for traffic control and management and um, you know that resources are available uh, for the students. The department encourages students to work with their special events committee next year to ensure a safe and successful event. For now, they are focusing on beach gatherings to come. For CPTV, Ali Wente. If you have a beach event in mind, contact the Pismo Beach City Clerk to, the, to assist you in the steps necessary to make sure your event is safe. A group of Cal Poly students is fed up with tuition increases. So they're taking their mission on the road and teaching more than 40 colleges and universities around the country about the facts behind the figures. CPTV's Hope Hanselman has the story. Tuition can go up as much as it wants, and we're forced to just pay it. Philip Chen is a third-year student at Cal Poly. He says he's seen the cost of tuition go up and students like him paying more out of pocket. We're paying more for less almost right now. So he's doing something about it. The campaign for higher education will be traveling 10,000 miles in an RV, teaching students about the economics behind the cuts and fighting for what they call affordable education. 20,000 people individually griping is not going to be nearly as effective as one group um, fighting for the same thing. Five students are going to be spending three months in these close quarters, but they say if they don't do it now, it may never happen. Because who else is going to, is going to speak up for public higher education and the students, right? But some argue the value of education is worth the increasing cost. The students in the Cal State system should recognize how much they benefit from the education they get, and they should be willing to pay uh, an important part of the share of the cost of their own education. Cal Poly economics professor Eric Fisher says the students need to be more realistic about paying tuition. The Cal State system is actually one one of the uh, least costly of all public school systems in the whole United States. For others, it's still too much. And come September, the students are hitting the road. I really think that, you know, $10,000 is a lot of money, um, no matter who you talk to. Have to raise $40,000 for their trip, and they're asking local businesses to sponsor them. Coming up next on CPTV, Hundreds of animals are losing their homes. And the two CSU presidents are receiving a pay raise. I'm going to spend time with my family and then I'm going to go to a track meet the next day. Last month, Cal Poly students passed the student success fee. And CPTV's Katie Bruce tells us how the new advisory committee will be put together. After student Let's hear about this new approval. Plans for the student success fee are moving forward. 
In an email to the Cal Poly student body, President Jeffrey Armstrong detailed how the committee of 11 people responsible for distributing the new funds will be structured. The group will comprise of a mix of both students and faculty and will be co-chaired by ASI President Kiana Tabrizi and Vice President of Administration and Finance Larry Kelly. The remaining nine seats will include six students representing each of the colleges on campus to ensure all majors are represented in the allocation of funds. Like hopefully the committee members are going to be like interacting with the students in their college and like are going to find ways so that they can like get a really good representation of how how the students want the money to be spent. I think that's really cool, but I do like how they are taking it to the student level and it's not just going to be like one person, like an adult making decisions. While voting yes or no for the fee, students were also asked how they would like the money to be spent. The top answers were more funding for classes and lab equipment, as well as supporting different forms of Cal Poly's learn by doing philosophy. In his email, Armstrong also promised full transparency about the formation of the committee and how the money is spent. President Armstrong says that the names of the student and faculty members who will be serving on the committee will be available in mid-April. CPTV News, I'm Katie Bruce. Success fee will the be implemented fall quarter of 2012. A recent decision from the CSU Board of Trustees sparked controversy after awarding 10% pay raises to two new CSU presidents. Cal State East Bay and Cal State Fullerton presidents received the first two raises since the board put a limit on president's salary increases. CSU students and faculty representatives have written stories and letters criticizing the recent raises. They call the salary increases unfair after recent tuition hikes and class cuts. The CSU board says that the raises are necessary to recruit and retain good leaders, and they also say that the twenty dollars to $30,000 raises have minor effects on the school's operating budgets. Guest speakers are visiting Cal Poly to discuss the impact of humanity. CPTV's Curtis Cole shows us what it means to be a human. The forum at Cal Poly is back, and for the next week, students will be able to listen to guest speakers examine some of the biggest questions of humanity. The theme of the event is the human impact and features talks about nutrition, language, sustainable architecture, and climate change. People come to college because they're curious about the world and about, you know, how people and, and things are and they want to learn more about it and um, the thought is that this is just one more opportunity to sort of dig into that, that kind of well of curiosity that, that students have and that community members have. Cal Poly Anthropology Professor Dawn Neal was the first speaker of the forum. On Tuesday night she discussed the transition from rural to urban ecology and the changes in food production in Fiji. These dramatic changes in consumption show a striking similarity to the United States, and Dr. Neal outlined the connection between urbanization and obesity. Most of what's going on to stem uh, obesity is the same thing you see going on here. It's uh, public health advocacy. The second speaker was Dr. Paul Frommer, the man who created the language for James Cameron's blockbuster, Avatar. He discussed the creation of the language and its implications to a better form of communication amongst humans. He welcomed the audience in his language, Navi. This exciting forum will continue next week with two more captivating guest speakers. To learn more, you can check out the Forum 2012 on Facebook. The next talks will be Monday and Wednesday night at 6.30 in Spanos Theater. Poly Escapes is making some big changes. CPTV's Joseph Corral has more information about their new location. Poly Escapes has relocated on the Cal Poly campus and is ready for some new adventure this quarter. Poly Escapes staff are finally settled in to their new office after making the move from the University Union office to the newly expanded Recreation Center last week. Although the new office may be a bit smaller than the original, it offers more visibility from outside with all glass walls and a higher student traffic flow. People walking into the Recreation Center's main entrance now must pass by the Poly Escapes office and are exposed to a display of kayaks, backpacks, and life jackets. Yeah, we like it because we have a lot, more, um, a lot more exposure. We're right in front of the Rec Center. We're bringing in a new crowd and it's more popularity for us. Students are invited to walk in during office hours Monday through Friday from 12 to 6 p.m. and Saturday 12 to 3 p.m. and ask any questions they may have or register for upcoming trips. Students can also register on the Poly Escapes website and find upcoming excursions as well as a list of rental fees and policies. Along with the new office location, a new outdoor climbing park is being built at the Recreation Center. 
The former Pauley Escapes climbing wall was removed from its old location in the University Union, and a new 42-foot climbing wall as well as a 13-foot bouldering rock are being built. Yeah, the new uh, rock wall, it's going to be huge. It's more like a rock gym. It's more like a tower, as you can see. It almost is up to par with the, the size of the rec center. Students and recreation center members will be able to climb for free when the climbing park opens later in the quarter. You can find Poly Escapes on Facebook where they offer up-to-date information on upcoming trips. One of their trips this quarter is backpacking in Anza Borrego April 13th through the 15th. Students can explore caves and take in the desert scenery. In an effort to increase cultural diversity on campus, Cal Poly is hosting its Polycultural Weekend. Starting tonight, cultural organizations will come together to host prospective high school seniors and transfer students. Those attending will have the opportunity to meet Cal Poly students from a wide range of majors. For more information on the weekend and the organizations participating, visit studentlife.calpoly.edu slash multicultural. The San Luis Obispo Animal Shelter is having problems with overcrowding. Due to the state of the economy, many owners have been forced to give up animals that they are unable to provide for. The shelter welcomes all volunteers to help the animals get the exercise and attention that they need. Students can also participate in the foster program, which allows volunteers to care for a pet in their own home until the animal is adopted. The shelter is located at 885 Oklahoma Avenue and is open to the public Monday through Saturday. After years of planning, Caltrans workers are currently installing a new traffic signal on Grand Avenue. The city hopes the signal will help accommodate the flow of traffic coming off of the Highway 101 and reduce the number of accidents in the area. There are typically about three or four accidents a year at the intersection, and though construction only started a month ago, the project has been in development for much longer. Um, I would say that between the state and the city, we've been working on some form of traffic control upgrade at that intersection for about five years. Yeah. In addition to the traffic signal installation on Grand, the city is working on a number of traffic light reconstructions and just finished adding a left turn light on Foothill and Tassajara. The traffic signal on Grand Avenue will be open late next week. This week, the Mustang Daily celebrated their advertising section success from the College Newspaper Business and Advertising Managers Convention. This year's event took place March 28th through the 31st in Miami, Florida. Newspapers from across the nation attended the convention to make connections and learn more about the industry. Awards are also given out at the event, and this year the Mustang Daily swept the competition. First place for Best Display Ad Campaign for a Circulation Under 30,000 was just one of the many awards the Mustang Daily took home. Coming up next on CPTV, we have your Central Coast weather report. Looks like we'll be having a great Easter. And the Cal Poly football team is preparing for next season. Welcome back to CPTV. It looks like we're going to have some warm weather this weekend. That's great news for some families on the Central Coast who are out doing their Easter egg hunts. CPTV weather reporter Olivia Bickle has your weekend weather update. How's it look out there? Well, we're looking at a weather shot of the P from earlier today. The P is actually painted rainbow right now in honor of Gaypril or Pride Month, which is sponsored by the Pride Center. As you can see, it's a really nice, warm, sunny, beautiful day. Um, let's get our headlines. All right, well, right now we're having a high pressure system that's bringing warmer weather to our Easter weekend, which is really great. We're also having breezes to accompany this warm weather, so it's a good idea to maybe bring a light cardigan if you're going out. Um, we're also looking at a slight chance of rain Tuesday night, so just keep that in mind. Now let's get our five-day forecast. All right, tonight we're going to have a low around the 40s, and tomorrow we're actually going to have a high around 75, so it's going to be a great day. For Easter Day, we're going to keep um, up with that 70-degree weather, which will be perfect for a lot of Easter egg hunts that are going on around slow. Monday and Tuesday, it'll be warm out with a few clouds, keeping up with that 70-degree weather and a little bit of breeze. And like I said, we have a slight chance of rain on Tuesday night. That's it for your weather. Back to you guys. Thank you, Olivia. I heard we got a new defensive coordinator for the football team this year right before spring drills opened up. CPTV sports reporter Jeremy Jay is here. What else is going on in sports, Jeremy? The Cal Poly football team opened up their spring practices on Wednesday morning. There's always great enthusiasm day one, so I'm excited with what we did, but we've got 14 really good days ahead of us. We'll, we'll, do, we'll declare how well we've done this spring by what we do on the 15th day. The Mustangs are returning only four starters on each side of the ball. The team has less than one month to practice before they play their spring game. 
One change to the program is new defensive coordinator Josh Brown. He was a special teams coordinator and inside linebackers coach the past two seasons before being promoted to defensive coordinator on Monday. He replaces Greg Lufer, who took a coaching position at Colorado State. Anytime there's change, it's going to be a little difficult as far as doing things differently and, and guys adapting to how we're doing those things differently. But, you know, for the first day, I thought we did a decent job. The Cal Poly men's soccer team also opens up their spring schedule this weekend against Cerritos College inside Alex G. Spano Stadium. The team returns 22 players but lost seven seniors, including most of their back line. Whenever you, um, you know, you graduate seniors, you know, new leaders emerge. And uh, we have an amazing group, a fantastic group. The game is on Saturday at 6 p.m. Last night, Cal Poly... Last night, Cal Poly opened up a three-game series against UC Irvine in the bottom of the second. Tim Wise gets an infield single to third to score Tommy Pleschkel, making the Mustangs up 3-0. Center fielder Mitch Hanniger keeps the offense rolling in the same ending with a sacrifice fly to left field, scoring Evan Busby. Now in the top of the third, with two outs and runners on first and third, Joey Wagman gets the anteater to fly out to center to end the threat. Wagman pitched eight scoreless innings and struck out four. The Mustangs went on to win 6-0. to zero. Thanks, Jeremy. And for baseball fans, there's a game tonight at 6 and tomorrow at 1. There is also a soccer game at 6 tomorrow. Baseball is looking to move up in the Big West standings. Well, thank you for giving us all the sports updates this week. No problem. All right, sounds like a great lineup. Up next on CPT, V, a world-renowned poet, performs alongside Cal Poly students. And the San Luis Obispo community enjoys endless amounts of Italian food. That's next. I'm going home to San Diego to see my family, hang out at the beach, and just relax. Welcome back to CPTV. It's time for your Pollywood Minute. This week, the Multicultural Center brought sharp lyrics and KCPR brought sharp teeth. The MCC put on their monthly open, monthly open mic slam poetry night, another type of groove. Cal Poly students spoke, rapped, and beatboxed in Chumash in the first slam poetry night of the quarter. This month's show also featured world-famous poet Delock Brothwaite. Brothwaite took the stage after Cal Poly students spoke about love, rejection, and difficult childhoods. I am the desire without the fear. I'm safe. I'm trustworthy. Uh, you need diversity in the workplace? Great. I need a career. Um, I am a... Uh... Brothwaite sparked racial dialogue with edgy lyrics and a catchy personality. KCPR will be holding Shark Week from now until the 9th. The week will consist of shark-themed music and shows. Shark Week will conclude with a concert in the UU on Monday. That's it for Pollywood this week. Enjoy your Easter weekend and join us next week. The popular... Well, thank you for tuning into CPTV this week. Make sure you check out Olive Garden since it just opened. You can tune in every Friday, Charter Channel 19 and on campus Channel 2. See you Have next a great week. weekend.